the 10th pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Patrick Mahomes, the second wow. quarterback. Every team wants to draft their franchise QB. Every team wants to get the steal of the draft and find late round diamonds. Today, I show you how you can increase your chances of drafting long-term starters for your franchise in Draft Day Sports Pro Football with my Excel scouting system. This is the Wobbegong. Let's get it started. The amount of scouting points you have is determined by your settings and the staff salaries. The more your stuff earns, the less is your scouting budget. You can also increase or decrease it in the settings. In the scouting screen, you can have a look at general information about the players and the personality as soon as you interviewed them and their scouting grades. Right now, it's only a certainty of 1%. With scouting, you can bump that up to 95% accuracy. You can also look at the combine stats, but keep in mind that they unfortunately don't tell you too much. The prospect with the best 40-yard dash time is not necessarily the fastest player in the class. After analyzing around 1,500 scouted players throughout 10 drafts in the game, it's safe to say that you can nearly ignore mid-40-yard times. Take a time of 4.5 for example. Speed ratings vary from 90 down to 55. Looking at a regression analysis with 40 yard time as the independent and speed as the dependent variable, R squared is only 0.527, meaning that around 50% of the speed ratings variance can be explained with 40 yard dash time. Similar outcomes can be found for plotting strength ratings against bench press performance. There is also a high variance, especially for mid-level performances. In this model, R squared is only 0.475, so less than 50% of the strength ratings variance can be explained with bench press. Summarizing that, combined stats may be helpful for an educated guess, but definitely not for more detailed physical projections. Nevertheless, never ignore highly positive performance as they might reward you with elite athleticism. But now, back to how I do scouting. I usually auto-scout and adjust it to some degree, but always interview and scout to get as much information as possible about one player. As a next step, I finish the scouting stage and export all college players into a CSV file. After that, I load the file into an Excel sheet. To fit the data into my scouting file, I need to delete the college, the combine stats, as well as the personal values except from money. Now I sort out every player I didn't scout, for example by deselecting everyone with zero leadership, as those players didn't have an interview, uh, otherwise their leadership would have been at least one or more. Next, I filter by position and copy-paste all scouted players into my scouting sheet. The link to download the Excel sheet is in the description, feel free to use it. Now I have an overview of every position and can directly see character traits and scouting grades. A grade of C means that this player skill is average in the league for this specific position. That's not an indicator of a specific skill number but changes according to the current league average per skill and per position. Therefore, the scouting grades cannot be translated to a specific overall rating. So what do these scouting grades actually mean? Every grade is translated into a number from 0 to 12. Based on the position, different skills are weighted differently, similar to the how the game calculates overall ratings. Speed at wide receiver therefore is significantly higher valued than speed for offensive tackles. This means that the scouting grade is the best guess to determine who might have the best overall rating for this position in this draft class. Looking once again at the data of 1500 scouted players, you can see a clear correlation between my scouting grade and the overall rating of the rookie. Still, there are lots of outliers. 
and based on the regression model, R squared is only 0 0.375, meaning that around 63% of the variance is still unexplained. Also partly because the scouting grade is highly volatile and dependent on the current players in the league, as I already mentioned. One other reason is player skill. The lower the player skill, the lower the overall. Player skill can't be scouted and there are no indications of a prospect having bad player skills. I mean, at least not that I know of. So if we would take player skill out of the equation by giving everyone perfect player skill, the correlation looks a little bit better and unexplained variance goes down from 63 to 56%. Another reason why the scouting rate is no clear indication for a specific overall is the staff's ability to scout. If you would order true speed for scouted wide receiver in one draft class, Normally the fastest player should have the best grade, the second fastest, the second best grade and so on. As you can see, that's not the case here and that's because the staff does not have perfect scouting ability. If you bump that up or increase the scouting accuracy in the settings, the scouting grades are way more accurate. When we now take a look at how nearly perfect scouting grades and overall ratings are connected, there is a way better correlation, leading to an R squared of 0 0.652. When we once again set all player skills to 100, we even get an R squared of 0 0.737. Around 70% of explained variance is really accurate when scouting players. The 26% of unexplained variance now simply comes from remaining scouting uncertainty, the changing league average over the years, and the fact that there are only 13 grades, but skill ratings vary between 0 and 100. You can make it even more accurate by changing the scouting rating type from grades to descriptive words, where you have more than 20 different grades. To summarize, the goal of the scouting sheet is not to translate scouting grades into specific overall ratings but rather to provide a tool where you can easily compare players in one draft class and maybe target a late round prospect with an unusual high scouting rate. If you want to improve scouting accuracy, simply change the settings to higher accuracy and to descriptive words or start hiring staff with better scouting ratings. You should not reach for a player who is two rounds down the board just because the Excel sheet says so, since there is still a higher probability that around one player will have a better overall rating than around three player. In the end, my goal is not to develop a perfect scouting system and cheat the game, but to have a tool to compare players and make more educated draft choices. I enjoy the remaining uncertainty of the draft. It's just part of the game to sometimes have a horrible pick and sometimes get the steal of the draft by chance. That's it for today. I hope the scouting tutorial gave you some new insights and helps you to get better in understanding the system. Thanks for watching everyone. See you next time. Bye bye.